All people get ripped off. All people are exposed to toxic hazards. All people are, uh, you know, underpaid and so forth. The workers, um, as people realize their common concerns for a more just treatment, they have to rub uh, and uh, and sandpaper the differences that do occur. But the, the the similarities are far more numerous between left and right than the differences. Hey, Nutmeggers, welcome to the first Primo Nutmeg of 2019. We're back with a bang. Our first guest of the new year is Ralph Nader. As you longtime listeners know, Ralph was first on Primo Nutmeg back on episode 85. I encourage anyone who hasn't listened to that episode to check that out next, right after this. This past week, I caught up with Ralph again at the Winstead Community Bookstore in his hometown of Winstead, Connecticut. He was signing copies of How the Rats Reformed the Congress, his new book, which is a fable about rats that invade Congress and astonishingly trigger a people's political revolt. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Ralph Nader. It's short and sweet. We talk about a lot of different topics, and I even ask him for his thoughts on my New Year's resolution. While you're listening, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, if you're on iTunes, please do write a review. Also, stop by Facebook to write a review there. Also, please do show your support at patreon.com slash primo nutmeg. There you can become a patron for just $1 a month. You'll get access to hours and hours of forgotten content from our earlier seasons. And you'll also help support a truly independent media outlet. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope that you enjoy this interview with Ralph Nader. And please do stay tuned to the end of the show. Mr. Nader, thank you very much for taking the time to meet with me again. I really do appreciate it. So you have a brand new book out, How the Rats Reformed the Congress. What inspired you to write a fable? Because you can't get through with just writing nonfiction books about Congress. There's a lot of them, and they don't really jolt people. But with this, we jolt it. We jolt them right at the beginning, because uh, there is a rat infestation in Congress and Washington, and they come up from the catacombs in the fable, and they get into the toilet bowls of the members of Congress. So there's all kinds of frenzy, and and uh, they try to suppress the uh, news from the press and they get caught, and a reporter uncovers it, and it goes all over the country. The news media goes into a frenzy. People start uh, uh, derisively talking about Congress, and they start paying attention to Congress. And so some activists here and there organize and uh, reflect the new public attention to Congress into a massive movement, very quick, just a matter of a few months, surround Congress with hundreds of thousands of people and all kinds of techniques we, we need to know about the citizen summons of senators and representatives in, in our in the, the realistic uh, effort to recapture Congress from the grip of uh, the corporations. Well, you've talked about this movement a couple of times and building a right-left alliance, but what I seem to be seeing is just the country really moving apart. I mean, um, you talk to people on the right and they... They say everybody on the left is a communist, and you know they... it's all driven by the politicians who thrive by appealing to one category or another, like red state, blue state, conservative, or liberal, and uh, and then it's accentuated by uh, reckless media like Fox yeah, and others, definitely. because it's all it's over two thousand year technique of divide and rule, and they, and they got to divide and rule more because the more they rule in ways that jeopardize all people, like all people get ripped off, all people are exposed to toxic hazards, all people are, uh, you know, underpaid and so forth, the workers, um, as people realize their common concerns for a more just treatment, they have to rub uh, and, uh, and sandpaper the differences that do occur, but the, the, the similarities are far more numerous between left and right, then the difference is like living wage, full Medicare for all, well, free with, choice. With people on the left, for example, I mean, they don't want to associate with, uh, you know, white supremacists, for example, you know, people like the Proud Boys. They don't have to. If you take uh, 
70 percent of liberals and 70 percent of conservatives, you've got an unstoppable political force. So you don't have to go to the edges. That's one. And the second is where you disagree on something that isn't really outrageous, but you just have a different take. Uh, you got to get over it and say, look, even husband and wife don't agree on everything, right? right? They live together. And so, like, if somebody doesn't like labor unions, but he hates corporate welfare and crony capitalism, and so do you, but you like labor unions, you say, okay, I'm not going to compromise with this guy on abolishing corporate welfare. Uh, if he agrees with me without compromising, I'm going to join forces, even though we disagree on labor unions. Don't you think that these labels even really serve to divide us, though? I mean, I noticed that you're very careful when, when you speak and, and you're very deliberate in the terms that we use. And when I hear these terms, capitalism, socialism, they mean such different things to different people. I mean, yeah. capitalism to some folks on the left might mean, you know, corporatism and government working with big business. To folks on the right, it might mean a free market. And, and you said you said that with, with socialism, too. I mean, that might be the state or that might yeah. be communities working together. So, I mean, really, shouldn't we get, be getting rid of all of these different political labels? Well, coming up if with we the don't new get rid of them, we ought to uh, bring them down to where people live, work, raise their family and give examples. So the examples fortify... Uh, what the label stands for and what it doesn't stand for. But I don't like to use isms. I don't like to use ism labels. I like to talk from the ground up. What do people really want for a first stage happy livelihood? You know, what do they need? Because they all have to live together. They all have to live together. It's not like 1810 where you're in a farmhouse here and, you know, half a mile away you're in another farmhouse and the main government worker is a postman. Right. <laughs> so, and you have to be self-sufficient. Something else I just really want to ask you about is, you know, with the advent of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you know, this is something that other people are saying is going to empower the people against central banks and governments. What are your thoughts on that? What, what do you think about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? Well, the uh, first thought is I don't understand them. And, uh, you know, there are all kinds of claims made. You get around the big bankers, you get around the Federal Reserve. Uh, and... Uh, it's a way to create your own market, and it's open. But you see, it's already been corrupted. How so? First of all, it's the manipulation of the pricing, cornering of markets, as you get more different cr cryptocurrencies, you know. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people get burned by it. And then th th there's all kinds of things that, are, how are you going to get people to take it when you want to buy goods and services? And uh, who, 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 who develops it? Uh, some guy in Korea, uh, you know, uh, what's the source of uh, the permutations of it? And eats up a huge amount of energy, electricity, huge amount of electricity. But it is important for people to either, I would think, form their own currencies or come up with alternative forms of That's banking. That's different correct? than cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency sure. relies on the internet. Right. Right. I'm, uh, the, the, the currency like the Ithaca dollar or the Berkshire shares, that's very local. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, hand to hand. You go into a store and you give them Berkshires and they give you lettuce and celery, for example. That I like because that keeps the circ economic circulation a bit more at the local level where the supermarket chains and the Exxon Mobil suck it out mm -hmm. of the local level. So last question, I was thinking for a New Year's resolution, you know, kicking off 2019, uh, I'm thinking about going vegan. Stop eating meat, stop eating dairy, stop eating eggs. Do you have any opinions about that? Do you think that's a good move, either for health or as a kind of form of opposition to the uh, food industry that we have? Well, there are two ways to look at it, a matter of principle or a matter of health. Health. If you look at it from health, uh, you would do well to minimize red meat and pork. Uh, fish is good for you. Uh, I think, you know, not... Eating eggs is a bit extreme. Uh, I think not eating any uh, animal products from industrialized crushing together, uh, you know, beef pens and, and the slaughter and the uh, inhumane treatment of domesticated animals. Um, that isn't just a matter of principle, although that's enough. It's a matter of health because when you cram them all together, you have to pump all kinds of antibiotics 
in the meal, whether they're sick or not. So they get resistant. You eat the product and you start getting uh, antibiotic resistance. And so, uh, and that's just one of the things they pump in uh, to these animals uh, in order to fatten them up faster than it would be natural and maximize profits of the agribusiness uh, giants. So just, I think just from co prudent consumer approach to health, you maximize fruits and vegetables, you try to go organic, you support local farmers, you minimize your animal products. Uh, and um, uh, you beware of the cloning coming over the horizon. Thank you everyone for listening to this interview with Ralph Nader here on Primo Nutmeg. Again, please do check out Ralph's first appearance on Primo Nutmeg episode 85. We talked more about building that right-left coalition, his thoughts on Donald Trump and the Russiagate narrative, and how regular people can fight back against corporate greed and retake power in Washington. Now folks, as I mentioned during the interview, I am personally going to be going vegan in 2019. If you look at a lot of the studies out there, you'll see that eating lots of red meat as well as dairy products really increases your risk of heart disease and various types of cancer. Beyond that, factory farming is really inhumane. If you've seen the videos of how cows and pigs and chickens are treated, it's really disturbing. Additionally, it's also wreaking havoc on our environment. So for all of those reasons, I've personally decided to go vegan in 2019. This is going to be a brand new thing for me. I hope to have more guests on the show to talk about the benefits of eating healthy. If you have any recommendations for guests or any insight, please do email me at media at primonutmeg.com. And once again, folks, please do stop by patreon.com slash primonutmeg. We need all the help that we can get to keep this project going through 2019. At patreon.com slash primonutmeg, you can become a patron for just $1 a month. Again, you'll get access to hours and hours of forgotten content from our earlier seasons. And you'll also get access to bonus patron-only content. So thanks again, everyone, for listening. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And here's wishing you a happy new year.